Hey everybody, J3Tech here, and today I wanted to talk about burn-in layers using Lychee Slicer. Burn-in layers, for those who don't know, are the first layers to be printed onto your build plate. So they need more exposure in order to adhere to the build plate, but not so much exposure that you can't get the thing off after it's done printing. If you ever had to chisel your print off or you can't get it to stick, this video is for you. All right, let's get started. Once you have Lychee open and you've imported your file, click on export at the top and then click on your resin. There's more than one way to get to this UI, but this is how I like to get to it. Uh, click on the resin that you wish to calibrate. And if you have more than one profile, which profile it is that you're trying to calibrate as well. For the burn-in layers, it's this section right here on the left. This entire section is only applied by four layers. If I put 10 here, it means everything here will be applied to the 10 layers. All printers have a separate exposure time for burn-in layers and normal layers. In this example, my burn-in layers are set to 18 seconds exposure time, and my, mo my normal layers are set to 1.5 seconds exposure time. This value of 18 seconds is only applied to the number of burn-in layers, in this example, four. So four layers at 18 seconds apiece. If we do a little bit of math, we can make a pretty important discovery. In this example, I'm printing at 30 UM, which is the layer thickness. 30 UM is the same as 0, uh, 0 0.03 millimeters, shown here. I like to use the UM, it's just easier for me. At 18 seconds per layer, this means that 0 0.12 millimeters of resin is being exposed to 1 minute and 12 seconds of UV light. This is about halfway to fully cured for this particular resin, which a fully cured layer is something we definitely do not want to do. This is because new layers don't bond very well to fully cured resin. I won't get into the science of why this is true, just know that it is true. Transition layers, the next section, which I have set to 3, can both help solve this issue or make it worse. But first, let's talk about what a transition layer is. A transition layer is simply a gradual step down from the burn-in UV exposure, being the 18 seconds, and the normal layer exposure, being the 1.5 seconds. As the print continues, the UV light will penetrate down 10 or more layers this can be more depending on the layer thickness and resin. As an example, a transparent or white resin will allow for more UV light to penetrate through cured layers than an opaque resin will. This will further strengthen the chemical bonds between all layers, even down to the first layer printed, the burn-in. This will increase its bond to the build plate. This can seem a lot to consider, but luckily I've already done a lot of my own experimentation and found out that as long as you don't have an excessive amount of burn-in or transition layers, you're in a great spot to start to calibrate your burn-in layers. This is an example of a print which was overexposed. So what we're trying to do is print a new layer of resin to an existing layer that's pretty much fully cured. The way we can resolve this is to decrease the exposure time, decrease the amount of burn-in layers, or decrease the amount of transition layers. There's one other way this could be caused by not enough lift height, which is also a setting found in burn-in layers. And with that, let's jump into the next section. Lift distance, lift speed, and retract speed. For my printer, I've got what, what we call TSMC, and that's these two boxes here. What this allows me to do is set a variable lift distance and a variable retract distance on every single layer printed. The way this reads is for the first four millimeters, I'm gonna be traveling at 40 millimeters a minute. Then for the next four millimeters, it's going to speed up to 80 millimeters a minute for a total of eight millimeters lift distance. And for retract, it's the exact opposite. For the first four millimeters, I'm going to start at the top at 80 millimeters a minute going down. I'm then going to slow down to 50 millimeters a minute. The reason we use slower speeds and TSMC if possible is to protect the print and the printer. By starting at 40 millimeters a minute for the first four millimeters, we're aiming that 95% of all printed layers released from the FEP during the slower speeds. Unfortunately, there are some pesky layers that just don't want to release from the FEP. This is why we need the extra four millimeters. It's simply insurance. If we traveled the entire eight millimeters at 40 millimeters a minute, this would take forever. This is why we run the second stage at 80 millimeters a minute. It's important to note that when the second lift speed engages at 80 millimeters a minute, the FEP is already under stress, having traveled four millimeters. So the jump to 80 millimeters a minute isn't really that dramatic. Moving on to retract speed, the important consideration is pressure and displacement. The build plate and eventually your print is gonna be used to displace the resin all the way down to the LCD, in this case at 30 UM. As the build plate and your print gets closer to the LCD, pressure will go up, and so will the forces and currents as it's displacing the resin. Think about a twig 
in a raging river versus a twig in a calm river. The swift moving river is going to push that little twig around, where the calm, it's just going to sit there. This is what can happen to supports or some small details on your model if your retract speed is too fast. Now that we understand what all these settings mean, let's get into the calibration part. We do this by editing the burn-in exposure time, which is found under burn-in layers, exposure time. I have this set to 18 seconds, which is enough time for small calibration prints like my boxes of calibration to be found here, also known as the Tesseract. This doesn't require much burn-in time because it's small print volume and it's medium raft size. The larger the raft, the more surface area against the build plate. If you look at these other models, they have vastly different build volumes and vastly different rafts. The large base seems like the largest object on the plate. However, because it's hollow, which I'll show you here, and because of its relatively large surface area against the build plate, it really only needs around 20 to 25 seconds. The alien spine, however, is solid and it has a much smaller raft. Because of this, this would need around 30 seconds, or it runs into the risk of not holding onto the build plate. The alien model in the middle has a relatively large raft as well as being hollow. Because of this, it really only needs as much as the boxes of calibration, which is about 17 to 20 seconds. I also cover this topic in my guide under the burn-in layer calibration settings chapter. In my guide, I cover this without the use of TSMC, as you can see in the screenshot here. I do this because I find it easier for new users to begin with very safe settings. In this case, I have it set to only 40 millimeters a minute up and down on the lift and retract speeds. I also go over the idea of small versus large models needing less or more burn-in exposure time. I also talk about light-off delay for burn-in layers, as it can be very important. However, only a few printers will allow you to set this independently of normal layers. So if you're one of the lucky ones, three seconds is all you need. Otherwise, just use what you have set for normal layers, which will be around one to two seconds. And after all this talking, we're finally near the end. All you have to do is add or remove four seconds of burn-in exposure time until your prints hold onto the build plate, but can still be easily removed. And that's it. Once everything is calibrated, simply adding or removing four seconds is all you have to do. For the remainder of this video, I'm gonna show you a reel of my most recent prints over multiple printers in resin. This is to give you an idea of about how your print should come off of the build plate. And remember, the link to my guide can be found in the video description. And if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out. And that's it, thanks for watching and have a good day. Thank you.